Hello and welcome to Richard Stockton College today for the Cape Atlantic League Championship game on the boys' side, St. Augustine versus Atlantic City. Mike Frankel along with Dave Catalana today on 97.3 ESPN.com. Today's game brought to you by Matt Ulmer and Ulmer's Appliances with live video. And Dave, it's a matchup that I think a lot of us anticipated before the season started. Of course, a rematch of last year's title game but hands down, the top two teams in the Cape Atlantic League, St. Augustine versus Atlantic City. What do you expect to see today? It played out, as you said, the way everyone kind of thought it was going into the season. They thought there were two teams at the top. Everyone else solid throughout the middle. But these two really were the teams that you were going to come, come out to see in this Cape Atlantic League championship. Obviously, the way the seedings went, the one versus two. St. Augustine's beaten them twice. Paul Rodeo said countless times, tough to beat someone three times. But... This St. Augustine team has shown recently maybe to be, a, again, a little step ahead of some of the others. I'm real interested to see how Atlantic City comes out. The last time they played on Atlantic City's home court, they got, and they got behind 12 to nothing to start the game. So let's see in the middle of the afternoon here how the Vikings will attack. A full house here at the Stockton Sports Center in Galloway. The previous game was a thriller, the girls' championship game. Ocean City knocked off Middle Township in overtime, 39-37. In fact, the OC girls scoring the only two points of overtime, and they came courtesy of Grace Sacco with five seconds to go. Dave, you mentioned it, third meeting of the season between these teams. Oddly enough, on the Preps home court, Atlantic City hung right in there. That was a pretty competitive game. It went completely the other way at the Battle by the Bay, as you mentioned. And you talk about beating a team three times can be difficult, but Atlantic City seemingly playing its best basketball of the season right now. They're on a, quite a winning streak. Uh, they really handled Wildwood Catholic the other night. St. Augustine, on the other hand, obviously heralded as one of the top teams in South Jersey, but they hit a little bit of a lull there, and you're talking about a lull against top teams. They lost to Camden. They lost to St. Anthony. They come back. They get a good win over a good Trenton Catholic team, and then they get on a roll. Well, Atlantic City hasn't lost since that game at the Battle by the Bay against St. Augustine, so you're right. They're on their way. St. Augustine's schedule late in the year. They scheduled some of the state powers, lose to Camden by three, lose to St. Anthony's by one, had a game against Trenton Catholic at the Shootdown Cancer Classic that they, they had lost. That game was over. They were down five with under a minute and somehow found a way to do it. So how do they bounce back? A couple of big wins in the Cape Atlantic League and now get to the final. All right, getting set here for starting lineups at Stockton as last year, of course, it was St. Augustine over Atlantic City by a final of 50 to 41 in what a lot of us remember as not really a an aesthetically pleasing game a year ago, I guess you could say, but whatever it takes. That's a nice way to put it. Yeah, St. Augustine grinding out a win a year ago. Uh, in fact, the prep has won the last two Cape Atlantic League championships the year before they beat Holy Spirit. Atlantic City, on the other hand, you always talk about the Vikings as one of the top teams in the Cal, but you have to go back to 2013 for Atlantic City's last Cal title. Of course, that was also the second of those back-to-back -back state championships. AC got back to this game in 2014 and got the doors blown off by Wildwood Catholic. So uh, Atlantic City with a lot to prove tonight, not only this season, but in terms of the overall hierarchy of the Cal in the last five, six years. Absolutely. They want to come back out, and both of these teams, since they've switched to this format, they've both won two titles. They've both won nine overall Cape titles. So Kind of the cream of the crop here we're playing this afternoon. All right, starting lineups being announced right now for Atlantic City, which will be in the navy blue as the two seed with white and gray trim. It'll be Ray Bethia Jr., the junior. Electric playmaker, also Flash Morgan starting down low. Nazim Derry, these are all juniors. The senior, Wanye Cologne, of course, the transfer who played his first three years down in Georgia. And then David Akins rounding out the starting five for AC. And Dave Akins, a kid who didn't even start the beginning of this season, and he came on in a big way. He's been in the rotation, the starting rotation, for the last stretch here, and he had a huge hit against Wildwood Catholic. Ever since alone. All right, on the other side of the ledger for St. Augustine, they're going with four that they've really been starting all season long, and that's seniors Austin Kennedy, Walt Harvey, Justin Mutz, the junior Marlon Hargis. It's been that fifth starter, Dave, that as you know, has sort of been a rotation this year. Uh, they started out with Brendan Aldrich. You've seen Nick Amici in there, but really Travis Stoll, junior, he gets the nod tonight, the transfer from Holy Spirit. Uh, he's been who Paul Rodeo has been going with of late. He has been going with him for most of the season, and a lot of it is because of his defense. I think you'll see him today on Cologne. Defensively, that's one of the people that St. Augustine has to shut down. 
and that's what Travis can do for them. Something to keep an eye on tonight is depth. Obviously, St. Augustine about as deep as they come. They'll bring guys off the bench like Jordan Kendrick, uh, Amici, Aldrich, Charles Solomon, maybe even a Lewis Reyes as well. Atlantic City, on the other hand, not as deep as we're used to seeing from the Vikings. Zion Montague will be their key guy off of the bench. You also might see Miles Marshall, uh, Ramon Rodriguez. But by all accounts, the five guys who are on the floor right now for Atlantic City are going to have to be the guys to get it done tonight. And that's when you have to look at things like uh, foul trouble or you know, hopefully no injuries or anything like that, fatigue, that Gene doesn't have the deep bench that Paul Rodeo does at the other side. All right, Atlantic City 20 and five overall. St. Augustine 23 and two, just the two losses, down to the wire losses against Camden and St. Anthony. Again, the Hermits, the one seed, so they'll be in white with the gray and blue trim. Really opposite colors of Atlantic City will be in blue. And we're at the end of the court, but we'll call Atlantic City going left to right and the prep going right to left as you can see on the video and Atlantic City wins the tap. It's Derry over to Flash Morgan and that shot rejected by Justin Mutz and here comes St. Augustine ahead to Austin Kennedy. Kennedy lays it in for two so a quick start there for Austin Kennedy. People that have seen St. Augustine this year have seen that a lot. Justin Mutz starts the offense on the defense and they're running the other way. Kennedy picking up 1,000 career points the other night in the Cal semifinals. The win over mainland, Wanya Cologne hits the deck and it looks like they'll get Travis Stoll on the foul there. St. Augustine traditionally man-to-man, -man, that's what they're in now. You'll see a lot of jump traps and things like that. Right now it looks like a straight man-to-man, -man. Travis Stoll is on Cologne. Derry with the lob and it doesn't pay off as Harvey comes down with the basketball and swatted away, but it looks like St. Augustine will keep possession here. The Hermits up two to nothing, about 30 seconds gone. Opening quarter, Cape Atlantic League Championship game and now you'll see you talk about that man-to-man -man defense, that's obviously a hallmark for Atlantic City as well, and they extend that defense here. This is what I was curious to see because at the game at Battle by the Bay, they started this way, extending. At the game at St. Augustine, they didn't. So it looks like Gene's gonna go with his bread and butter, and he's gonna pressure. Here's Hargis, he's checked by Ray Bethia. Over to Travis Stoll on the wing. Stoll circles back up top to Harvey. Now here's Kennedy for three, off the mark. Rebound chased down. And that's Aikens for AC. Now here's David Aikens, strong move to the bucket and he lays it in. So David Aikens, we talked about him off the top, he gets two for AC. That's what they're gonna need from him. He's pushing it right back and points right away for the Vikings. St. Augustine's turn now, they work it around to the corner. Now back up top as Kennedy will reset for St. Augustine. This is also interesting. Saint, uh, Atlantic City is out pressuring all over. Normally they just go out to Austin Kennedy, but now they're covering everyone out to the line. Connecting on the three there, that's Marlon Hargis with an early triple for the prep. And, and a steal here. And another steal, Aikens back with the ball for AC. Here's Bathia up and under and can't get it to go, but a foul on the play as Ray Bathia Jr. will go to the line for two. Couple of keys right there. Marlon Hargis has been struggling a little at late. He, at late, he killed Atlantic City in the first game, 18 points. And, this, and he's been struggling with his game a little bit. Hits the three there. Great sign for the Hermits. First shot up and good for Ray Bathia. It's a situation too, Dave. I mean, St. Augustine's been in so many blowouts this year. They haven't needed night in, night out scoring from all of these guys. They'll certainly need it tonight against a team like Atlantic City. Yeah, absolutely. And you got to see, again, they've getting it, they're getting it from different people all the time. A pair made for Bathia. Now here's... Hargis the other way, can't get it to go near the rim, but it's steal and it's stole. Coming back with the basketball for St. Augustine and now the prep will look to slow things down a little bit as Austin Kennedy sets the offense around a screen from Mutz. Now circles back up top. Mutz over to Walt Harvey. Harvey into the lane, now back up top for Hargis. Hargis working right side of the court, right inside in front of, I should say, the Atlantic City bench. And they'll reset once again, Austin Kennedy. 5-4, Hermits on top, just over two minutes to go. Opening quarter here at Stockton. Now here's Austin Kennedy, an open look for three. That's college range, maybe NBA range, and that one goes down for Austin Kennedy. Austin Kennedy is the main three-point shooter for St. Augustine. You mentioned getting his thousandth the other night. Great high school career. Here's Derry with a move, but stripped away. Derry able to get it back for the moment. Now we have bodies on the floor and a jump ball situation, and the basketball will go to St. Augustine. So a fast start here, 8-4. Hermits on top of the Vikings early on here in the first quarter. I love to see what Atlantic City is doing here. They're not laying back. They're out pressuring. They're figuring they're going to come out and play take and see if St. Augustine can take their best shot. 
Here's Austin Kennedy dribbling it up. Now over to Marlon Hargis. Again, Hargis just a junior on a team with a lot of seniors. Stole another junior. Back to Hargis, and now they work it around the outside, trying to set up Mutz in the post. This could be an advantage today. Mutz turns, can't get it to go. Crashing the boards, though. That's Austin Kennedy with the hustle play. Kennedy with seven already. Such a heady player. You see him doing with the outside shot, and now with the follow-up. At the other end, we have an offensive foul. That's Justin Mutz taking the charge, and the foul goes against Flash Morgan. Mutz so many times used to swatting that ball away, but a heady play there as he steps in and takes the charge. Yeah, that is a huge call that way because if you know if Mutz can get in foul trouble that's a, a, a big advantage for Atlantic City the call goes the other way and it's the offensive foul so 10-4 St. Augustine in control but a turnover here as Harvey and Hargis had their signals crossed Harvey zigged Hargis wanted him to zag so a turnover Atlantic City with the basketball the Vikings have to be careful here as we talked about off at the top that second matchup between these teams at the battle by the bay it was over almost as soon as it started there. So they got to stay in this game early. And now we have a travel, and that'll go against David Akins for AC. St. Augustine loves that zone pressure coming off of a score. Tony Iaconelli, the defensive coach. Oh, 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 little and they did right there. 4.50 to go, opening quarter. Cape Atlantic League Championship game, of course, as you can see on the video, a packed house here at Stockton for a rematch of last year's title game. Here's Kennedy around a screen, leaves this one short. Floorboard comes down to David Aikens. And here's Aikens moving ahead for the Vikes. Aikens up off the glass and in. David Aikens, we've talked about it. What a spark for Atlantic City. Here comes St. Augustine the other way. Harvey hard to the basket. He's contested there by Morgan. And now the Vikings have the basketball right back. Aikens slicing again. Wild shot. And it falls off of the rim there. Nope, they're going to call a travel on David Aikens there. As we thought it was a foul, but it's... It's a travel, but either way, 10-6, Atlantic City very much right back in this thing. The turnover there, but you can see what Aikens brings to this team. Electric offensively, and the Vikings need that right now. So it's Kennedy with the ball for the Hermits. Trying to post up Mutz now. He gets the entry pass from Harvey. Mutz working in the post on Nasir Morgan. Loses it, gets it back, turns the corner. His shot is short. Ball on the floor, and it's Nazim Derry. The junior coming up with it for AC. Nice job by Morgan there, holding his ground against Mutz. Bathia for three, well short. AC controls the rebound for the moment. And it looks like they're going to say it went off of St. Augustine. Paul Rodeo not happy about that call. But it will stay Vikings basketball. We haven't mentioned Bathia just yet, but Bathia, a lot of the offense here goes right through him, and Walt Harvey has that assignment. Hermit's best defensive player, but right there, Bathia gets the better of him. Right on cue there as Bathia scores and scramble for the basketball here. And St. Augustine will keep it. 10-8 game, AC chipping away from that early deficit here. St. Augustine with the basketball, 3.37 to go here on 97.3 ESPN.com. Mutz in the post. Mutz backing down Morgan, spins off the glass, can't get it to go. Harvey crashing for the boards. And I'll tell you what, I think that's an early game plan, obviously, for St. Augustine to get Mutz going in the post. He has the size, he has the skill down there, but Flash Morgan doing all he can early on. Morgan is doing all he can, and so far they're not doubling off, especially not doubling off Austin Kennedy down in the post on Justin Mutz. So tonight you have to think, Mutz knows how good Atlantic City is, but AC doesn't really have the size that the Vikings have had in the past. And after going up against Oshun Osuni the other night of mainland, Mutz has to be licking his chops tonight because height-wise, there's no one that can match up for Atlantic City down there. And Osuni gave him a, a tough time the other night, especially early in that game. He doesn't normally play someone taller than he is, and, and I thought he did do a nice job. I think tonight, if they see that matchup, if St. Augustine sees the matchup with Morgan on him, they're going to keep going to the well and see if Justin, again, their best player, going on to Division I scholarship to high point, he's the guy they're going to try to go through first. Mutz yet to score in this game. Just two scorers for St. Augustine so far. Austin Kennedy has seven. Marlon Hargis with three. Nick Amici checks into the game. A big night the other night in the Cal semifinals. I believe at a game high 14 in that one. He's on the floor. Almost thrown away. And AC gets up with it. Derry into the lane. Flicks it up off the window. And it went through. And then back out. But they will cut the basket. That was Ray Pathia on the follow. We're tied at 10. Loose ball that the Hermits don't come up with there. Bethia does. Atlantic City now into full court pressure again. So all knotted up at 10. Here's Hargis. 
Checked by Bethia. Hargis over to Kennedy. Derry on him. Mutz, and now they post up Harvey down there. And it looks like they're going to have a foul against David Akins as he was just a little too strong with the body down low. So not just Mutz. There's a size advantage in a number of positions for St. Augustine, including what they feel like right now with Walt Harvey. And if you haven't seen Walt Harvey, he's a very versatile kid, can do a lot of things offensively, and the Hermit's best defender. Here's Kennedy wide open for three, top of the key, and you can't leave him that wide open. Kennedy, 10 points already. Atlantic City did a great job. They knew the play was a lob to Mutz. They took that away, but that left the wide open three. Pressure from the prep. AC breaks it. Here's Wanya Cologne in the bucket there, and he gets it to go. Trying to draw the contact as well. No call, but he gets two. Cologne, normally a three-point shooter, goes to the rack that time. St. Augustine answers, and again, it's Kennedy who's really fired up for this one off of the miss from Hargis. Kennedy has 12. He's on pace for a huge game tonight. Hermits up by three. You've got to love a player like that doing everything for the Hermits right now. Looking for Bethia in the lane. Mutz in there to break it up. Now three ball on the way from Akins. His shot a little bit long. Amici comes down with the rebound. In some trouble now, though, in the backcourt. Steps through, and they're going to stay. It went off of Atlantic City there, so Amici into the game. We talked about his contributions the other night. A kid like that, Dave, too. You know, a senior and so much talent at St. Augustine. He has to wait his turn. And even now in his senior season, he plays sparingly, but he seems to make the most of those minutes. He does. He can handle the ball. He can. He definitely can shoot it. And he saw that against Mainland the other night. Here's Stoll. College three from the corner. Off the mark. Kennedy with another offensive rebound. And Stoll with the follow off of that. And Travis Stoll. Got Knocks in for two. And you got to love Travis Stoll. He misses the shot, probably a shot he didn't, he really shouldn't have taken, but he stays with the play, finishes up. Aikens over Mutz, which is easier said than done, but he's able to get it to go. Aikens not deterred at all. St. Augustine going to call a timeout. Paul Rodeo wants to talk things over. Very entertaining game, a highly offensive game so far, which is the opposite of last year's game, which was downright offensive in a different way last year. 17-14, uh, Hermits on top. And Dave, too, you know, I, I called uh, the previous game, the girls' game, for another station. And we were talking about in that game the three-point lines here at Stockton. Obviously, it's a college three-point line. They do have the high school line there, but the high school line, as you can see on the video, is in white. The college line is in black. And already we're seeing everybody step outside the college line. Now, some of these guys have that range, but you have to keep in mind that you can shoot those threes a little bit closer than you might think. Yeah, it's not a, not a huge difference, but it's, def it's definitely a difference. And I can see we're right here in the corner. We can see both of those shots that we saw from this side where the player was outside the college three-point line. All right, so as we get reset here for action, Hermits on top, 17-14. Austin Kennedy on a tear so far, 12 points for the Hermits. Marlon Hargis with three, Travis Stoll with the putback for two. Ray Bathia has six, David Akins with six, and Wanye Cologne with two. St. Augustine gets it into Kennedy. He's checked by Derry here, working his way, and Derry almost with the steal. Kennedy dives on the floor. And another jump ball, possession arrow to Atlantic City. So that's that full court pressure defense, which has really been a hallmark of the Vikings. It pays off there as Derry forcing the change of possession. Austin Kennedy is, is a, a very good high school player. He is a combo guard. He's not really a traditional point guard. Obviously, last year, St. Augustine had Saeed Nelson to handle all that. And in past years, they've had other guys. They don't have that one solid lead guy. I mean, again, Austin Kennedy, again, very good high school player. but. Not that same kind of handle like a guy like, obviously, Saeed Nelson. Is that a situation where the sophomore Jordan Kendrick, who is a true point guard, are they sort of grooming him for the future here? They are definitely grooming him for that spot. And as you said, though, finding that fifth spot, sometimes it's a point guard, sometimes it's a big man. I think we'll see a little bit of Kendrick today. Akins continues to impress. He spins and gets two more. What's gotten into David Akins? He's got eight. Well. The St. Augustine has been concentrating on Bethea and Cologne, and it's Aikens that's hurting them now. Stoll, top of the key. Now gets it over to Mutz. Mutz, right-hand dribble over to Amici. Amici thought about a three with a jab step. Now goes baseline with the right hand right in front of the AC bench. Almost loses it. Gets it in, though, to Charles Solomon, who's into the game for the first time. Back out top to Amici, and now Mutz will reset. 44 seconds to go, opening quarter. Gene Allen imploring the Vikings to defend here. And maybe a little overzealous as we have a foul on the play. 
And Atlantic City with a lot of energy right now, yeah, but sometimes like, yeah. a little bit too much. Yeah, but you like the energy. You like the way they're coming out and playing. They went out to Justin Mutz there. Solomon in the game now plays inside for St. Augustine. That'll get Mutz a little chance out on the perimeter. Charles Solomon, the sophomore. Got to figure more minutes ahead for him next year. Circles in. Fakes with the right. Now hands off to Stoll. Reverse layup. Can't get it to go. Solomon crashing the board. Saves it. And Kennedy tracks it down for the prep. Solomon had a big game against Atlantic City, 8.7 boards the last time they played. Uh, ball on the floor, it looked to go off Kennedy, and that's exactly what the officials call there. So the situation may be, Dave, where you, we want to try to hold for one. Holding for one against Atlantic City can be a tall order sometimes. No, the, the Atlantic City defense has been exceptional in the half court right now. 20.7 seconds to go, a highly entertaining first quarter here at Stockton University, Cape Atlantic League championship game. AC Vikings, the two seed, trailing the top seeded Hermits of St. Augustine, 17-16. And AC with a chance to take the lead heading into the second quarter. Wanya Colon receives the pass. Colon moving fast. Now Darry will slow it down. Back to Akins, 13 seconds to go. Akins with a Michi on him. Right hand dribble, switches to the left. Now back to the right, into the lane. David Akins, floater, and it goes down again. David Akins, 10 points in the quarter. And that's how this first quarter will end. Atlantic City with all the momentum right now, just up by one, but they were down big early. Atlantic City on top, 18 to 17. David Akins, Dave, picking up right where he left off the other night. And we talked about it. it's a guy who, he played minutes early on. He didn't have the starting spot, but not only is he a starter now, he's really been the leading scorer for this team of late. It looks like everything they want to do is going through him now. I said a lot of times it would go through Bethea, but it's Akins right now that's doing that. When St. Augustine played at home against Atlantic City, Marlon Hargis sort of had his coming out party. Akins has already had his, but he's showing in front of a big crowd here that he can take over a game. David Akins, the junior. So many of these Atlantic City players are juniors, so you wonder, not to get ahead of ourselves, but could there be a changing of the guard next season? Obviously, St. Augustine is going to reload, and they have some younger guys too, but aside from Cologne, Atlantic City will have all of these guys back next year. So you figure that makes maybe this game a little more important for the prep. Both teams want to win it, but the prep is a senior-laden team this year. They are this year, and, you know, and again, that team only lost Saeed Nelson last year. So a lot of these guys played big minutes. Not only they're playing him this year, played him last year as well. But St. Augustine, Atlantic City, teams like that, they just reload every year, and they come back maybe not as deep as you said with Atlantic City this year. But you see these guys getting valuable minutes, and they will be the team that you'll see next year. Thanks for watching today on 97.3 ESPN.com. Mike Frankel, Dave Catalana. Video from Matt Ulmer today. We're at Stockton. Cape Atlantic League Championship game. And Atlantic City trails St. Augustine. Check that lead St. Augustine after a slow start. 18-17. Hermits will inbound to start the second quarter. And it'll be Austin Kennedy working around a screen there from Harvey in the backcourt, trying to get him a little more breathing room. And now they cross the timeline. Here's Austin Kennedy. Tough defense there by Derry. He has to give it off to Stoll. Stoll with Wanya Cologne on him. Around the screen from Mutz. Trying to get it down to the big fella. Now Mutz turns the corner, goes up strong, and gets two. First two of the game there for Justin Mutz. And I think that shows you what Paul Rodeo talked about in the, at, the, at the end of the quarter. I think he wants to get the ball inside. It took a while because of the Atlantic City pressure, but they finally got it to Mutz. Austin Kennedy almost with a steal there. Instead, the ball goes out of bounds off of him. And Atlantic City down one now. 19-18, here's Bethia. Over to the middle, top of the key, Cologne into the corner for Akins, left-hand dribble behind the back. Now to Bethia in the corner with Stoll on him, and Wanya Cologne up top. Cologne over to Derry, three ball on the way, Nazim Derry can't get it to fall, and the rebound is poked over to Walt Harvey, and here's Kennedy. Kennedy into the corner for Hargis. Hargis goes baseline, hangs, misses, and the ball comes down to Wanye Cologne. Here's Cologne, the senior transfer. Down to Derry. Derry rejected down low by Marlon Hargis. And we're going the other way. Walt Harvey. Now they'll look to slow it down a little bit as Travis Stoll finds a lane. Sort of an awkward move there. Almost got caught, and Atlantic City comes back with the basketball. Here's Bethia. He lost the ball going to the basket. And gets it out to Aikens. His three, way long, sort of a perky jerky stretch here. It's like two different teams have come out to the start of the second quarter here Then we played that pretty clean first quarter. A little sloppy now. Austin Kennedy will try to 
get things going for the prep. Again, the Hermits led big early. Now just up one here, 6.17 to go, second quarter. Mutz double team down low. Cologne being a pest, but they're gonna say he got him right on the wrist there. And foul goes against Wanye Cologne. Yeah, that one right in front of us. You could see where Cologne got him across there. But again, look where St. Augustine's going. They're going down low. Justin Mutz. St. Anthony's game earlier this year, late in the game when the Hermits were trailing, Austin Kennedy pulls Justin Mutz aside and said, you have to be selfish for us. And I think they need him to do that now as well. Stoll thought about a three. Instead gets it up top of the key to Hargis. Now it's Kennedy in front of the Atlantic City bench. Derry on him. Now they get it to Mutt. Zion Montague into the game for AC. Now a follow there, Marlon Hargis off of the miss from Harvey. And that athleticism there from Marlon Hargis just off the charts. St. Augustine had both games so far this year against Atlantic City has done a great job on the boards and they're doing it again now. We saw Kennedy early, we saw a little bit with Harvey and there Hargis follows. So Montague into the game for AC and he'll be tasked with trying to slow down Justin Mutz in the middle. Here's Bethia around a screen, and Ray Bethia Jr., who just does so many things well, knocks down two more. The other way, now there's an obvious bump in the lane there as Marlon Hargis was charging, and Derry went shoulder to shoulder. They'll get Derry there on the foul as head coach Gene Allen with some choice words for him. 5.28 to go. Hermits on top of the Vikings, 21-20. Full house here at the Stockton Sports Center, Stockton University. This Cape Atlantic League Championship doubleheader become one of the premier events of the South Jersey basketball season. St. Augustine gets it in, it's Hargis in the corner. Now drives baseline, sort of an awkward dribble there, and they're gonna get him for a travel. So Atlantic City down by one now, a chance to take the lead. And here comes the sophomore Jordan Kendrick, who we spoke of earlier, seeing his first action of the game, he'll give Marlon Hargis, a and bit I, of a break. And I think this is for that ball handling that we talked about. Quick player, great handle, see if he can run the offense, get Austin Kennedy off the ball a little bit. He's a guy who really didn't play much to start the year, but he's earned those minutes, had a big game against Camden. And here's Aikens with a miss, a rejection then on the follow by Mutz. Stole into the lane, Mutz with the hammer. How many times that was follow that time it was a flush from Justin Mutz. Now the offensive glass is where St. Augustine is living right now. Justin Mutz defensive end, offensive end the other way. Ray Bathia with a much needed two for AC at the other end. He has 10. Hermits up one. 4.50 to go here. Second quarter. Kennedy gets the step. Gets the daylight. Can't get it to go but again an offensive rebound. That time Walt Harvey and Atlantic City quite simply not checking out on the defensive boards it's, right now. And I would say it's not part of the offense to just miss and go rebound, but that's kind of what St. Augustine is living off of right now is the offense. Great move by Kennedy comes off and the follow up and Walt Harvey's gonna try to earn him at the line. So Harvey looking for his first points on the night, the senior, talented player, but obviously not a guy that they run a ton of offense through. And he gets his first point of the night. A kid like that, Dave, I mean, he could be a star at so many schools in South Jersey. He comes to St. Augustine and he's just, he, he's not a role player, I don't want to say that, but he knows his role well. And certainly he can score, and when they needed to, he does just that. And he certainly does. He started games, some games as a sophomore and was a huge player on last year's state championship team. So he's a kid that's getting looks from some different colleges, some twos and threes, great kid, and uh, I think his career will go on somewhere next year. Another guy that does so many things well, doesn't just have to score to affect ball games. He sinks a pair there, and the Hermits are up 25-22. Zone look from the Hermits here, but doesn't look like if Cologne is not in the game right now. I was going to say you'd have to get out to make sure you knew where Cologne is on the floor, but he's not in the game right now for the Vikings. Brendan Aldrich is into the game for the first time for St. Augustine. Flash Morgan trying to go baseline, cut off by Aldridge. Up top to Aikens, thought about a jumper, and now it passes to Bethia. And back to Aikens. A little different look, obviously, on the zone. Atlantic City trying to, a different offense they want to run. Turnaround shot, no good from Bethia. That's a tough shot there, and rebound down to Mutz, and now here's Jordan Kendrick with the basketball. Over to Austin Kennedy, flips the pass to Mutz, goes left to Aldrich, dips in, and Brendan Aldrich gets nice, two. And a nice pass from Mutz and a better screen from Solomon there to clear out the lane for the senior Aldrich. So all of a sudden the prep back up by five. 27-22, under four to go, second quarter here. Cape Atlantic League final. Aikens behind the back and he gets the roll. David Aikens, he has 12 for AC. Now we go the other way. Kendrick with the clear out from Solomon again, but that time he lost the handle 
And the Vikings have it. Here's Bathia. Bathia trying to work it to a teammate, but another steal. And here's Austin Kennedy with the ball. Kennedy, hard to the lane, rejected in the last minute there by Flash Morgan. I think Kennedy was looking for some contact, didn't get it, but the prep will keep the basketball. He, he was looking for the contact, and I think Aikens did a nice job of backing off of that to not have the contact. 27-24, Hermits on top. And now we have some whistles after the ball was inbounded. And it looks like a timeout was called by Gene Allen and the Vikings right before that ball came in. So 27-24, Atlantic City down by three. Dave, if you're Atlantic City right now, specifically Gene Allen, you have to like what your team's done right now, but even doing so many things well, you're trailing by three, and I guess that's the problem that so many teams run into when you play St. Augustine. Well, again, when they're switching up like St. Augustine just did there back to the zone, the first thing I would do is get Wanye Colon in the game, probably their best outside shooter, to attack against this zone. But David Aikens right now is, is everything is going through them, so David Aikens keeping them in it, and somehow you have to find a way to keep St. Augustine off the glass. Aikens with 12 points, Ray Bathia has 10. The only other two in the game from Wanye Cologne. Austin Kennedy with 12. Walt Harvey with a deuce from the line there. Marlon Hargis with five. Mutz has four. Stoll with two. And Brendan Aldrich off of the bench with two as well. St. Augustine, we should know too, Dave, gets a little bit of a break after this. Obviously, the top seed in South Jersey non-public A, and they have a bye to open that tournament as they have had in many recent years. Number one seed, they get the bye in the first round. They play the winner of Red Bank Catholic and Paul the VI. They'll have a home game. Uh, next Thursday night, Atlantic City right back at it with Eastern. On Monday, so a much quicker turnaround for the Vikings, but they're not worried about that tonight. Miles Marshall into the game for the first time for AC. As Gene Allen goes a little bit deeper into the bench, we talked about this not being the deepest Atlantic City team. Marshall, a kid who's going to get some minutes, a few minutes every night. And Mutz gets the ball in here from Kennedy. Mutz, spin move in the lane, now dumps it down to Aldrich. A lot of traffic in there, and it's rejected away by Montague. Now here's Bathia, ahead of the pack. Ray Bathia, up strong, can't get it to go. Slap of the backboard there. The Vikings don't like that, no call. And here's Hargis the other way. In some traffic, he hits the deck. And what do we have here? Could go a number of different ways, and it's a travel against Hargis. He seemed to lose the ball there, but I guess they're going to say he rolled on the floor with it. A lot of times you see that call to walk. Officials look at it. This, did he gain an advantage? Uh, their, their assumption is that he did gain the advantage there. But Austin Kennedy, lucky with the pass that he just had to throw and try to save. Three minutes to go. Cologne is back in the game. He's on that wing with Austin Kennedy monitoring him right now. Cologne, a really good three-point shooter. He was a little hotter to start the season. Has cooled off of late, but still capable. Here he is for three. Wanye Cologne right on cue, but this one is long. And the rebound comes down to AC. Marshall with it. Back out to Bathia. Ray Bathia straight on. His shot is good. Three ball. Ray Bathia, he's got 13, and we're locked up at 27. Now here's the prep. Mutz trying to go to Solomon. He gets positioned down low. Charles Solomon can't get it to go, but there's Aldrich with the follow. Once again off the glass. They go inside to Solomon, him in the game. Mutz to the outside. Even Aldrich plays inside a little bit for them. Here's Bathia to Cologne for AC. Just over two minutes to go now. Vikings trailing by two. And here's Aikens. Aikens up to Bathia as he gets some instruction from Gene Allen. Ray Bathia, the junior, also a very highly recruited player. Over to Cologne. And back to Bathia up top. Yeah, the Hermits have switched back to their man-to-man, -man, sagging a little bit, but and there's another one from Bathia. Banks open on a Sunday in Galloway as Bathia banks in the three. All of a sudden, the Vikings on top, 30-29. to 29. Great game. It's a great game. Great atmosphere down here. Austin Kennedy around the screen from Mutz. Back out to Mutz. Mutz trying to clear out here, working on Montague. Backs him down, turns the other way, and can't get it to fall. Rebound still up in the air, and it's Montague coming down with it for AC. Better job by the Vikings on the glass there off the miss. Akins will look to slow things down a little bit for AC. Minute 10 to go, up by one. Dangerous pass. Cologne gets it, though, on the wing. Cologne into the lane. He's blocked by Solomon, and here comes Mutz leading the break. Justin Mutz all the way in, but loses it on the way up. Thought for a second we might get dunked on there, Dave, but he lost it on the way up. Foul on the play, and Mutz will go to the line for two. We certainly had a good look at it coming at it. Now, Justin Mutz has struggled as of late from the foul line. You would hope that he could pick that up moving into playoff time here. He missed a couple of big ones against Trenton Catholic. Ended up getting his own rebound, though, and getting the game-winning shot. 
Mutz bends, shoots the first one, and well short there, as you mentioned. Yeah, he does so many things well on the interior, but not known for his outside shooting and certainly struggled of late at the free throw line. Well, he's, he doesn't take many outside shots, which is obviously, again, not his strength, but when he gets to the line here, he needs to convert. Second free throw, also short, and Bethia able to corral the rebound. In trouble for a moment, but gets it out to Colon. Now Colon, quick pass to Aikens. Into the lane, David Aikens one more time. Well short, may have been partially blocked down there. And Kennedy, one-handed to Solomon, ahead to Mutz, and Mutz with the slam. So they run the break to perfection there. Somehow, Austin Kennedy comes up with the ball. Somehow it ends up in the middle of the floor. And Justin Mutz certainly knows what to do with it at the end. Yeah, the Hermits living dangerously there, but able to convert in every facet of that fast break. And Mutz finishing for two. He has six. And now it looks like AC wants to hold for one. As AC down by one, 31-30. Harvey making things difficult, though, for Bethia. Now Bethia's by him to Aikens. He shoots. And his shot is long. And the rebound comes down to Solomon in the corner. Out to Kennedy. Austin Kennedy, seven seconds to go. Bounce pass to Harvey. Harvey all the way in, can't get it. Still loose. And here's AC the other way. Aikens, did he get it off? I don't think he did. And it didn't go in anyway. So after one half of play as Austin Kennedy head down right into the locker room. He's feeling good today. His Hermits have a 31-30 lead. Dave, your impressions of the first half, obviously we thought for a couple moments there early on, this one might turn into that Battle by the Bay game. That has not been the case. It's been highly competitive. The best part about it is, again, the way Atlantic City came out, the other two times where they played, they came out two different ways. This time, Gene Allen's group came out and said, they're going to play their game, they're going to attack, they're going to pressure, and St. Augustine's going to have to handle it. For the most part, they handled it okay, but they weren't able to run their regular sets. They're living off the offensive glass. That's keeping them in this game, that and their fast break. The regular sets are just really not working for them right now, and credit Atlantic City's defense for that. Obviously, you've seen the prep quite a bit. It seems to me, I don't see him as much as you do, but Austin Kennedy, he just comes up in big games, whether it be the battle by the Bay, whether it be a, a game against, you know, a St. Anthony. Or when the spotlight's on, and obviously it's on tonight in the Cape Atlantic League final, he has 12 points to lead the way. And you look at him, and he doesn't, you know, he doesn't impress you with size or anything like that, but he's just a tough tough high school basketball player that steps up in big spots. He is what the epitome of what people would call a gym rat. His family is a, a basketball family, the Kennedys. His older brother was on the team with him when, uh, when um, Austin was a freshman. He played some varsity. He played a lot of varsity, again, as a sophomore and a junior. And the thing that always impressed me about Austin is we watched him walk off the floor here right now. The expression he had on his face is the same if it's a 31-30 like it is now, or if they were up 42 to 15, it, it doesn't matter. He plays the game the right way. He plays it the same all the time. And he's the kind of guy, the glue guy, that always comes up with a loose ball, hand on a pass, hits a key shot, whatever St. Augustine's needed over the last, really, four years. Austin Kennedy's one of those kids that comes up with it. Kennedy leading the way with 12 for St. Augustine. Justin Mutz with six, all in the second quarter there. Marlon Hargis has five. Brendan Aldrich with four. Off the bench, Harvey and Stoll, each with two. The other side, really just two scorers right now for Atlantic City. Ray Bathia has 16, David Akins has 12, Wanya Cologne with two, Darian Morgan yet to score. Obviously, two guys carrying Atlantic City right now. Do you anticipate, though, that they'll have to spread it out and make it a little more even uh, to stay in this game because you're relying on just two guys to stay hot? Certainly, they've shot lights out so far, but can you ride that wave the rest of the way? That'll be the big question to see if they can ride it. But the one thing that I noticed right there as we came back in that later in the second quarter, it's not, it's not difficult to see that Aikens is carrying it, but you see St. Augustine make a switch. Walt Harvey, the best offensive player on St. Augustine, who was on Bethea early, was on Aikens late. And that just shows you the respect that maybe St. Augustine has. Or maybe it's not just respect, it's, it's almost fear because Aikens the guy that's killing them right now. Can't take your eyes off of Bethea for sure, and you can't take your eyes off of Cologne as you said, he's been struggling a little late, but you know he can come up big. Halftime here on 97.3 ESPN.com. Cape Atlantic League Championship game. Mike Frankel, Dave Catalana, Matt Ulmer, Ulmer's Appliances, providing the live video today online. And obviously this is the culmination of the Cal playoffs with the final here today. And then it's state tournament time, and we touched on it a little bit earlier. But I know when I checked in with this St. Augustine team before the season, uh, specifically Justin Mutz, 
you know, I asked him about state championship, and he just wanted to talk about tournament of champions. And obviously, you have to win your section before you win the state, and you talk about the TOC. But it's a situation a year ago where they got so close. You got the first round by in the TOC. You get Linden there, and Linden, arguably the top team in the state, certainly the top public school team this year. And you come up so close, and it's easy to say, well, you have a lot of talent back. You should get back to that spot. But as you know, Dave, there's a lot of good teams in non-public A. Maybe not as many as non-public B, but there's still some major hurdles to get over for the St. Augustine team in the state playoffs. Well, first of all, these two teams both know Linden very well. They Linden ended both of their seasons last year. Atlantic City in the final, St. Augustine in the TOC. And listen, when, when Paul Rodeo starts a year, he talks about the goals every year. Cape Atlantic Champ League Championship is a goal every year, no question. Number one seed in South Jersey is a goal and a state championship is in a goal. When you win one one year, you want to take that next step. St. Augustine has won five state championships under Paul Rodeo. The first was before the TOC even started, but in the others, they have, there's, they've never won a TOC game. And so the idea of getting back to one and win one, I can see why Justin's looking for that. I mean, they won the, the championship last year. To get back to it is just, you know, it's a big goal. My concern all the time, and I mention in this, is the point guard position. When Paul Rodeo has won his other state championships, he had that lead guard. He had Scott Green, he had Scott Greenman for one. He had Isaiah Morton for one. He had Anthony Farmer for one and Saeed Nelson. Can they win one without that lead guard? I think so, but it's going to be difficult if a team does what this team is doing to them tonight. Atlantic City winning back-to-back -back state championships. Uh, you have to go back to 2012 and 2013. And the Vikings, they won South Jersey Group 4 a year ago, and then they got to that state championship game, and as you mentioned, lost to Linden. But you look at South Jersey Group 4, and to me, it's it's just wide open. I mean, so many top teams from the Olympic Conference, uh, you know, your Lenape's of the world, even an Eastern team, which AC will see in the opening round. That's a rematch, and AC won the first matchup in January, but it was a competitive game. So Atlantic City, obviously very high in so many of the newspaper polls across South Jersey, but... Uh, they're a team that really has to be on its game each round of the Group 4 playoffs because that one really up in the air. Well, you could, if you're in a Group 4 right now, no matter what the seed is, you're always looking for Atlantic City. Are they in your bracket on the other side? Because they're always a force. They're always going to be one of those teams that's playing their best when it comes to tournament time. Everyone wants to do that. Everyone says that. But I think with Atlantic City right now, that may be the case. Eight straight wins coming into this, putting together a great half right now in this first half against St. Augustine. And maybe they're at that point where they can get to that and make the deep run in Group 4. Back to the Cape Atlantic League. Obviously, just two teams standing here, and we're at halftime as the Hermits lead Atlantic City 31-30. to I wanted to get your impressions, though, on some of the other teams in the Cal this year. Uh, you saw a number of them uh, a couple weekends ago, obviously, at the Shootdown Cancer Classic there at St. Augustine and, and throughout these Cal playoffs. But... You know, to me, it's, it's been really these teams as we've talked about, but some other nice stories in there. I think Ocean City's had a pretty solid year, and they're certainly a contender in South Jersey Group 3. And then you have to talk about Mainland as well. I mean, even getting to that Cal semifinal, overwhelmed in the second half by St. Augustine, but that was the first time the Mustangs had gotten that far. Well, you look at a team like Mainland that put together a really solid year with a lot of kids that other people didn't know about before. You mentioned Ocean City was a team that we thought, everyone thought was going to be down this year, and they weren't. St. Joe with a nice story under Paul Rodeo Jr. Millville, a team that hasn't been traditionally good, lost to St. Augustine in the first round of the Cal tournament, but they had a nice run this year. So you'll love seeing a lot of good teams in the Cape Atlantic kind of coming up from years that they haven't been good. Yeah, Millville, three of their losses, I think they only have six, but three coming at the hands of St. Augustine. So uh, obviously a little bit overmatched there. Millville will start the playoffs, the state playoffs against Kingsway on Monday at six o'clock out there. You know, Wildwood Catholic with a good run too, and, and that's who Atlantic City beat the other night. But Catholic, the problem in non-public B, as you know, uh, it's just a buzzsaw in the playoffs. Well, You're talking about playing teams that are classified as South Jersey, but they're truly North Jersey teams. Well, again, I mentioned St. Joe. Their first run is gonna be up to, to Patrick School, you know, the first round game. For, for his father, Paul Jr., you know, for, for Paul Sr., that used to be his state final. And for young Paul, unfortunately, it's the first round. Another team that you mentioned is Middle Township. We saw them with Anthony Farmer early in the year, and they just were, you know, they were, they were young. They were a little inexperienced on certain things. He was trying to do something new. And then we did see them at the, at the um, Shootdown Cancer Classic. Totally different team. Really just, he's really starting to put something together there. When you replace a legend like he did in replacing Tom Farrakko, it's going to be difficult. But I think I, what I saw is he's got the kids buying into what he wants to do 
and I think they're in, they're in they're going to be in a, a really good position with him moving forward. Again, state playoffs starting this week. Uh, South Jersey Group 4 and Group 2 on the boys and the girls' side starting on Monday. And then Group 1 and Group 3 starting Tuesday. The non-public starting a little bit after that. Of course, St. Augustine, as we talked about with that first round bye. You know, you, you anticipate some of the other teams that the prep might face in South Jersey. Yeah, I look at a team like a Bishop Eustace, who's had some huge wins this year. They knocked off Camden. Camden obviously beat St. Augustine. Um, and there are going to be some hurdles for this prep team, no doubt about it, in the state playoffs. Absolutely. Now, they, they you know, the other side of the draw is where St. Joe Metuchen is, is the two seed. Eustace on the other side as well. But there are some other teams in there. Camden Catholic, always tough. Ball the six, a little bit young, maybe a year away. Notre Dame with some exceptional, they have an exceptional sophomore point guard there. Those are teams that they can face. Fortunately for Paul Rodeo, he'll get a couple of those at home before heading up, hopefully, to Jackson Memorial. All right, getting set for the start of the second half here tonight as the Hermits of St. Augustine lead 31 to 30 over the Vikings and that's, of AC. And that's surprising. I'm sure a lot of people in here came in here thinking that Atlantic City could hang in, but after the last two, maybe they didn't think they would. A great entertaining first half, as I said, just it's such a great facility for the league to have a, a final in, and, and Stockton does such a great job hosting it. And uh, it's for these guys, and some of them won't go on to play in college, they won't have this atmosphere again. Yeah, dare I say capacity crowd. I mean, the bleachers on each end aren't pulled out. I know in some years past they've actually pulled out the one side of bleachers. That's not the case today. But in terms of capacity for what is out, there's people sort of hanging over the rails up top and pouring into the corners of the gym, which is really the situation here uh, for this event every year. And, of course, the girls, we mentioned it off the top, a thrilling win there. Ocean City over Middle Township, 39-37. And a lot of the fans that got here early for this one were treated to the end of that one. I say treated, middle, or I should say Ocean City held the ball for two minutes and 30 seconds. So some booze raining down, but in the <laughs> end, Ocean City won that game. A little strategy from Coach Barufi. Hey, if it works, it works. All right, here we go. Second half here, third quarter underway. Atlantic City starts with the basketball. Here's Derry, scoreless in the first half. And he'll go to the line for two. And Azeem Derry, of course, standout football player as well, quarterback for the Vikings football team, and also a key contributor last year as a sophomore during Atlantic City's South Jersey Championship run, and he'll go to the line. I wouldn't expect anything to change for Atlantic City defensively here. If they make the foul shots, I'm going to see if they're going to pick up full and try to pressure the Hermits. Derry makes the first for his first point of the ball game, wearing number 15 tonight. He wears number three. And the Vikings are the home team. So he's got two favorite numbers. He makes a pair. And that gives the Vikings the lead, 32-31. A little bit of pressure, three-quarter court. Hargis around the back. He lost it, though. And here's Ray Bethia Jr. the other way. Bethia met by Hargis. And the two-handed swat out of bounds. So talk about making up for a mistake. Marlon Hargis. Marlon Hargis has some point guard abilities. He sees the floor very well. But he's a tall, lanky kid. That high dribble there, and he lost it. You know, but this is the kind of kid, he see, again, he sees it well, but is he a true point guard? Turnover here as St. Augustine comes up with the steal, and that's Kennedy hitting the deck, and it looks like they'll get Ray Bethia on the foul there. Well, that's, Kennedy pops back up, he's okay. That's two fouls, one on Mutz at this end, one on Bethia at the other end. The big players for both teams picking up kind of chippy fouls, you know, something like that down the stretch. You don't want to see it. That's two now on Bethia. They say the foul on the floor, though, so St. Augustine will inbound. And here's Mutz. Mutz to the hole, cut off, gets it out to Walt Harvey, and now over to Austin Kennedy. Kennedy into the corner for Hargis. Three ball on the way, and down it goes for Marlon Hargis. He now has eight. Once again, you got to like that confidence. He got turnover the last time down, has the confidence to rise up and take the shot. So on the seesaw here, Hermits back up by two. And AC with the basketball, dribble there by... David Akins again, he had 12 in the first half. Gets it over to Derry, thought about a pass, instead he attacks Mutz and does it with success as he used the forearm to kind of create a little room and gets two. At the other end, yeah. and that's Travis Stoll on well, the business end of a bucket. Yeah, well done there by the Hermits to push right back and a nice pass from Harvey to Stoll. Here's Akins, spins, goes over Mutz, that one rims out. Uh, the Cologne for a moment had it, and now Nasir Morgan with it, but he didn't see Hargis behind him, but Hargis' momentum 
carried right into Morgan, and the foul goes against Marlin. Gene Allen probably told his group, you see what St. Augustine's doing on the offensive glass. You can go do the same thing, and that's what they've tried to do here a little bit. So Atlantic City basketball down by two. Third quarter, just about a minute and a half old here. And it'll be Aikens bringing the ball up. He's checked by Austin Kennedy. Aikens, the left wing there for Derry. Trying to post up Pathia. Instead, it's a jumper at the elbow, and it rims in. That's one of those soft rims here at Stockton paying yeah, off. Pathia's starting to heat up. Harvey back on him, but he's heating up. Pathia now with 18 points. They haven't really needed him to score big like that in every game, and now we'll have a backcourt violation. And Atlantic City will get the ball right back. But Thea is certainly capable of putting up big time numbers. Really one of the key players for Atlantic City last year as a sophomore, still just a junior, but you get a sense with him, I mean, sky's the limit. I remember seeing him as a younger player too. I mean, this kid, you could just tell what kind of player he was gonna grow into, and he's done that for Gene Allen. Dangerous pass into the backcourt. Kennedy's there, but Aikens able to grab it for Atlantic City. We're tied at 36, six minutes to go, third quarter. Aikens out to Derry. Derry makes a move into the lane there. Nick Amici just into the ball game, and it looks like they'll get him for the foul, sort of riding the hip of Derry around the corner. Yeah, I think that last turnover there um, on Marlon Hargis, Paul Rodeo went to the bench. He's going to go to Amici now to handle a little bit. Tough assignment, though, for him on Derry. Yeah, Derry's a kid, too, who he can, he can blow up for some points sometimes against Eastern specifically. He had, I believe, 22 in that game. Here's Aikens, his shot is off the mark, and Amici hauls in the rebound. Outlet pass to Mutz, and now back to Amici, but Manye Colon on him, and now they get it to Austin Kennedy. Derry on Kennedy. Kennedy, step back, jumper off the mark. Rebound comes down to Ray Bathia, Jr. Austin Kennedy doesn't take too many bad shots. That one may be a little bit questionable. Tough shot, certainly, sort of the step back behind the back dribble. Capable of making it, but maybe a better look would have been available. Talk about tough shot, there's Bethia, he can't get it to go. And Mutz with the rebound for St. Augustine. Here's Kennedy, behind the back again, gets it to Mutz, power dribble into the lane, scoops with the right hand, he can't get it to go. And now here's Atlantic City the other way. Bethia, caught in the air for a moment, blocked there on the three point attempt, and that was Travis Stoll. Numbers for St. Augustine if they want him. Instead, a three ball from Kennedy. And that one is a little bit long, and the rebound comes down to AC. Behind the back dribble, Bathia, that's pretty. Bathia all the way to the basket, and he leaves it short. Ray Bathia Jr. did everything right except finish. And we're back to that sloppy time of the year, and Paul Rodeo in his 40th year has seen enough basketball to know that it's time to call a timeout and get a handle on his hermits. Ray Bathia, he did the dirty, the dirty work, if you will, the tough work, and then just sort of got to the rim and left it short. Easy for me to say as he glides <laughs> to the rim from the foul line there. Maybe a tougher finish than it looked, but you're right. I mean, there's been just a few stretches of this game where things have gotten a little bit herky-jerky and both teams sort of trying to do too much. But for the most part, especially compared to last year, a game in which the prep won 50-41, to 41, which was, by all accounts, a, a pretty ugly game. Uh, this one, a lot more fun, a lot more fun for the fans here at Stockton. The, the up-tempo game can be a thing of beauty if things are going well. But if there's balls, you know, you're missing shots, balls getting kicked around, it can get a little ugly for, for uh, the fans to watch. Tied at 36 here on 97.3, ESPN.com. Game brought to you by Matt Ulmer and Ulmer's Appliances with the live streaming video. Thanks for joining us here today. Again, a packed house on hand at Stockton. Cape Atlantic League Championship Saturday. It's become really the signature event, certainly for the Cape Atlantic League, but really one of the signature events uh, in terms of any tournament in South Jersey. Regular season tournaments are great, but you know yeah. this Cal tournament, especially since they went from six teams to eight teams, it gets a lot of people talking. Yeah, it's a great format, it's a great setup, and I think it's been good for the league. I have to believe St. Augustine's going inside here to Justin Mutz. Amici to Kennedy out of the timeout. Charles Solomon getting ready to check in here, and they do go down low to Mutz. Working against Montague, and Mutz with the advantage there as Justin Mutz, you called it, gets two on the inside. Listen, you don't have to be a genius. I sat next to Paul for a lot of years over there, but you don't have to be a genius to know. Go to where your bread is buttered and go to Justin Mutz. So, Hermit's up two, but Thea gets Harvey in the air, leans in for an awkward shot, and now that ball goes off Montague trying for the offensive rebound. 
down low. And now it is Solomon checking into the game, and he'll give Nick Amici a break. Going a little bigger, bringing Mutz away from the basket a little bit. Derry continues to hound Austin Kennedy. Kennedy behind the back, working his way up the court. Now crosses the timeline, gets it to Stoll. Mutz popped open for a second. Now he does receive the pass down low. Nice spin, but he runs out of room. And he runs out of room because they're going to say Montague pushed him out of bounds. Yeah, tough assignment for Montague. Looked like he got a little push on the side, but such a quick spin move from Justin Mutz. And for Mutz, too, I mean, he's obviously played varsity since he was a freshman. We didn't see those moves from him in his younger days. You didn't see those moves, and you didn't see the vision passing the ball. So St. Augustine up by two with the basketball, more than halfway through third quarter here in the Cal Final. Mutz again posting up on Montague. Out to Solomon, little low post, high post, and he traveled. So traveling violation there on the sophomore, Charles Solomon. Trying to set up a play where they go high, low from Solomon down to Mutz. It was taken away by Montague that time. All right, here's Ray Bethia. AC down by two. Bethia into the lane. Akins, three ball on the way from the corner. That one's long, and Mutz able to snare the rebound. Mutz to Walt Harvey. Harvey with some room to operate. Now gets it to Stoll and Kennedy. Kennedy, high arcing shot, nothing but air. And scramble for the rebound. That ball goes off of the apparatus that holds the basket there. Really weird sequence as uh, but Theo was just trying to save that ball. Probably put a little, little too much juice on that one. I thought, I thought Austin Kennedy had a clean look at a three there that he passed up for that little floater shot. That's normally one he will take. Kennedy with the ball again now to Walt Harvey and back to Kennedy. Just under three minutes to go now. Hermit still up two, 38-36. Solomon, top of the key over to Kennedy. Now down low to Mutz, and here we go against Montague. Turns the corner and scores again. So that's a tough matchup for Montague, as you talked about, and Mutz just having his way right now. Well, I would never, I would never think of a hack-a-shack type of thing, but Mutz has struggled from the foul line there, and I don't know, on a play like that, do you put him at the line? Atlantic City does have some big bodies they can bring in off of the bench if they choose to go that route. Instead of Aikens right now, and David Aikens, two more. He has 14, nice secondary scorer today for AC. Behind Bethia, this ball sails all the way out of bounds. We'll see if it was tipped. They say no, and Atlantic City will get the ball right back. It may have actually been tipped by Atlantic City and Walt Harvey there before it went out of bounds. You know, David Aikens as a, as a secondary scorer, is a pretty, that's a pretty good secondary guy. And you see Austin Kennedy is on him now with Harvey on Bethea. Missed assignment for a moment as Derry was open. Gets it down to Bethea over the shot block attempt by Mutz. Love to see that. Going right at the glass, taking it right at the shot blocker. Aldrich back into the game for St. Augustine. Now here's Kennedy over to Aldrich and a little too hot to handle there as Kennedy was able to shed the defender, but the pass a little too hot in tight quarters. Good idea, bad execution on the pass. Maybe a little dump bounce pass there. Comes up soft to Brendan Aldridge, maybe. So we're locked at 40 here, 150 to go. Third quarter, Cape Atlantic League Championship game here on 97.3 ESPN.com. Akins with the basketball for AC. Over to Derry. Trying to post up Bethia there, and now he's worked his way out past the foul line. So he'll try to repost. Derry, nice move into the lane. Cologne, open three ball, and he's off the mark. And here goes Stoll the other way. Travis Stoll up off the glass, can't get it to fall. Harvey with the rebound, though, and St. Augustine keeps it. Walt Harvey, a little bounce in his step, gets it out to Stoll. Dribbles out to the corner, now flings it out to Mutz. Mutz, pull-up jumper, and his shot is off the mark. And Bethia comes down with it. AC, Gene Allen wanting Derry to go there and didn't. Instead, it's Aikens for three. And, well, that one worked out anyway because David Aikens knocks down the triple. Well, when he's feeling it right now, and he had a very clean look at the three. Kennedy trying to answer. As now the Hermits are down by three. Kennedy and a little bit off there. Rebound still up for grabs. And this time saved to St. Augustine. Tough shot there by Kennedy, but Stoll gets the rebound. They're going to say... They're going to count the basket, and the foul goes against Aldrich. So an interesting situation here. They'll count the bucket from Stoll, but it'll be no, just, now he's going to wave it off it now. Off. I'm trying to figure out what originally Aldridge the, did. Yeah. yeah, originally he had the motion count it. I guess he was saying on the floor okay. is what he was saying. 
So at the end of all that, wave off the basket. Yeah, and Paul Rodeo is saying the same thing. How, how is he not counting the basket? I think the motion, a lot of people interpreted it, including us saying count the basket. I think the official was saying it happened on the floor. Well, you got an interesting situation. Atlantic City holding up three with the ball, and they have possession. Oh, no, I'm sorry, St. Augustine will have possession to start the, start the fourth quarter. But Atlantic City here, after the three from Aikens, can get a last good shot here and extend the lead. Jordan Kendrick back into the game for the prep. He is tasked with guarding the very hot David Aikens. Now here's Derry, and it looks like AC will try to hold for one. Derry with four points tonight. We'll see if he triggers this final play of the third quarter as Gene Allen is trying to get things spread out a little bit. Now they're going to work with Thea into the high post. Instead, it's Aikens. Ball on the floor. But Thea, two seconds to go, and this is trouble. Long three on the way. And not a bad shot, but it hits the front of the rim. So after three here, St. Augustine surrenders the lead. All of a sudden, Atlantic City on top, 43 to 40. Great quarter by Atlantic City there. Again, came out with the same mentality of pushing St. Augustine, pressuring them, and I think it worked out for them. St. Augustine had a few that rolled off the rim. Austin Kennedy, a couple right there, off a missed shot, tip up again, doesn't go in. They've had a couple come in and out, and David Aikens on the other end is really making them pay. The prep continuing to crash the offensive glass there, and you know, you look at Atlantic City, one thing that jumps out to me is Wanye Colon. This is a kid that I mean, all the attention was on him in the beginning of the season, and obviously he doesn't need to do a lot of the scoring tonight. His team has a three-point lead, but he's been a little bit off from the outside, just two points for the senior point guard. Well, you see he had that clean look from the corner just a minute ago, and that's one where Travis Stoll was on him, sagged off a little on the penetration, and listen, he hasn't made many, but I would not be, I still wouldn't be leaving him alone in these situations. Kid, obviously, that uh, big-time scorer down in Georgia, grew up with a, a lot of these Atlantic City players before moving down there and he moves back up here to play his final high school season with his childhood friends and by default the senior leader on this team because so many of the players for Atlantic City are juniors and it'll be St. Augustine ball to start the fourth quarter they are on 97.3 ESPN.com video from Matt Ulmer and Ulmer Appliances they go right to Mutz in the post Mutz tough shot there and the rebound comes down to Atlantic City. Good defense that time by Atlantic City. Derry, some contact, no call, but Thea with the follow. Ray, Ray Bathia, 22 points now. Big time players make big time plays here, and that's what Ray Bathia is doing for the Vikings. So the prep really almost in trouble for the first time tonight, down by five. And that ball goes off of Flash Morgan, who's been quiet on the offensive end, no points for him tonight. Uh, but doing a decent job defensively, especially with Justin Mutz down low. Well, I think the, the plan that they're doing, they're playing behind Justin, not going to try to front him. They're going to play behind him, and Justin's got to make a move. Strong move to the bucket there, and that's Walt Harvey, his first field goal of the night, and it brings the Hermits within three. And that's the kind of field goal you see from Walt Harvey, not a designed play. He just took it, went to the hole. All right, so Atlantic City up by three with the basketball. David Aikens hands off to Cologne. As you mentioned, Stoll really tight on him. Still don't want to give him the open look. Some contact here, and we'll see. It looked to go off of Bethia, and it did. Walt Harvey, a little pressure on Bethia that time. Almost going for the steal, and it hits off of Bethia and cooks across the floor and out of bounds. So St. Augustine can pull even with a three, pull within one with a two here, as we're exactly one minute into the fourth quarter here in the Cal Final. Hargis, here's Harvey, back to Hargis, three ball on the way from the corner, his shot, Kareem's off long and it's down to Wanye Cologne. Now some space for Derry, much lurking though and they got him for steps and I think Dave that's the right call. I believe so too, Gene Allen really upset about the call. You know in the first game at St. Augustine, Gene got a technical on a, what I classified as a goaltend that wasn't called and he got a technical and it really changed the game, it was close at the time St. Augustine pulled away. He doesn't want to get one here, but that was the right call. Now we have an offensive foul against St. Augustine. And I didn't see if it was Kennedy or Stoll. I think it was Kennedy. It yep. Was, it was Kennedy. On the push off. Roll of the eyes there from Austin Kennedy. As it's been a physical game, and but anytime you extend the arm, they're going to have to be compelled get, to call it. Exactly. You're going to get that call. Here's Cologne. Cologne. Nowhere close, and here we go the other way. 
Kennedy. Tracked down from behind, though, by Derry. And here's Pathia. Ahead to Aikens. Aikens over Mutz and nothing but air there. Tracked down by Hargis. And here we go with this helter-skelter play. Hargis. Nice bounce pass, though, there to Austin Kennedy. What vision from Marlon Hargis. Well, when you get the helter-skelter play, at some time you just have to come back and make a solid basketball play. Three on two, three on one there. Come to the foul line, make the nice bounce pass, and lay the basketball up. 6.18 to go here in the fourth, and Atlantic City on top of St. Augustine, 45-44 here. And I have to say, too, Dave, the tie's still on right now from Paul Rodeo, which is a rarity sometimes. It's a midday. You know, it's the middle of the day, so maybe keep the tie on a little bit. And, you know, Paul's been through the wars, and he's seen a lot of these, and he knows. Now, I, I would expect him here come out a little defensive pressure, a little something different, just to throw Atlantic City off a little, get them off their rhythm, maybe steal a bucket going back the other way. But they are going to have to be able to run some kind of offensive set for the last six minutes here. It can't all be off of defense. All right, so out of the timeout here, it'll be Atlantic City basketball, and... St. Augustine extending that pressure. Watch Austin Kennedy. It plays that center field position here. See if he can get up, pick up something. Cologne for a C. Off balance shot off of one foot there. And let's see here. They're going to get Travis Stoll. He had Nasir Morgan on his back giving up some inches there. Looked to be a pretty solid box out, but it they're going to say he sort of grabbed yeah, him. Yeah, it's kind of from here. And I don't know why he would have held him. I mean, he had a good box out, as you said. Keep position, box out, and go up and rebound. So the foul goes against Stoll, his second. And the Hermits do have 16 fouls, something to keep an eye on here as AC will be shooting one and one with the next foul. Travis Stoll, as you said, transferred in this year from Holy Spirit, has fit in. We talked to him earlier, I talked to him in one of our games at St. Augustine. He's fit in really well with this group of kids, you know, playing on the opposite side for a few years over at Holy Spirit and coming in. And, has solidified that fifth starting spot, mostly because of his defense, but also because of his offensive rebounding. All right, Atlantic City with the ball, Flash Morgan. Here's Cologne back to Morgan. First field goal attempt, I believe, of the game. It's a three, it's well short. And can't, yeah, and I can't believe Gene's happy with that shot. No, you wouldn't think he would be. Here's Hargis, another athletic play the other way, and Marlon Hargis gives the Hermits the lead. Marlon's had a couple like that. That's the first one that's gone in a while. Three ball the way from Cologne, still off the mark. Outlet pass. Here are the Hermits. Back to Kennedy. Trying to slip a pass there to Hargis, and we have a traveling violation against Marlon Hargis as he was on the ground. Looked to bump his head there too, Dave, and he's in a little bit of pain right now. Yeah. Again, whether he gained an advantage, he probably did. I, I, I don't like the call because the kid's hustling. Two guys diving on the floor, but I, it's probably the right call. But you love seeing the kid lay his body out there and try to get it. And, you know, you got to feel bad for Wanye Cologne. He's a shooter. We've said that. It's just not going in for him right now. But, you know, at some point, shooters have to keep shooting, I guess. That's right. But at some point, maybe you got to look elsewhere. Maybe go to the hole, get to the line, something to get yourself going. He's also a really good free throw shooter, so not a bad idea there. Yeah, there's been some games this year. I remember, you know, at the Battle by the Bay, the finale between AC and Pleasantville. Pleasantville was in that game for a long time. Cologne shot AC right into the, into the W column in the third quarter with a couple makes. So we'll see if he can get going here. But right now, the Vikings trail by one with 5.30 to go. Derry. Good defense there by Kennedy, but Derry almost got it to go. Instead, Montague with the rebound. Now a ball on the floor. Stoll with the tie up. And it looks like Montague and Stoll were tied up. Possession arrow with the Vikings, so we'll stay right here. Another reason why Travis Stoll is on the floor. All the guys going for the loose ball there. Atlantic City keeps possession, down by one. And what's been a very entertaining Cape Atlantic League championship game. Montague, back to Derry. And up top, and he'll reset with Wanye Cologne. Stoll on him. Now over to Derry as Atlantic City trying to take its time here and set something up. High screen, goes away from it, does Derry. Off the glass and in. Nice crafty play there by Nazim Derry. Yeah, Gene Allen calling that from right in front of the bench. He called that play. He wanted Derry going to the hole. At the other end, though, Marlon Hargis with two more. Nice to see Hargis coming right back, taking it right at him again. Good matchup. Hargis now with 12, almost a steal there from Harvey. Instead, AC has some numbers now. Contact near the basket, no call. And Derry tracks down the rebound. Here's Cologne from the corner, and we talked about it, Dave. Wanye Cologne, shooters keep shooting, and he finally connects. And Wanye kind of shook his head like, it's about time, I got one to go, and he did. Love to see the confidence. Kennedy 
parting of the Red Sea right there, and we're tied at 50. Great action here. This is what the, state, this is what the Cape Final is supposed to be like. This one, you get the sense coming down to the wire. We're tied at 50, just over four minutes to go. Cologne, another three. This one's blocked, though, by Travis Stoll. And Cologne gets it right back. Here's Pathia. His three ball on the way. That one's long. Tip, another tip, and Mutz comes down with the rebound for St. Augustine. Long outlet pass to Hargis. Marlon Hargis lays it off to Harvey. Pump fake, and then he gets it to go. Good patience there from Walt Harvey. And another steal. Harvey comes down with it. Back over to Hargis, and let's see. Paul Rodeo would love the continuation, and by the way, the tie is now gone. Instead, they're going to say uh, that that foul was on the floor. Well, people that have seen St. Augustine play in the last few years have watched Walt Harvey and quietly making contributions like he's done on those last two plays there. Timeout here called by Gene Allen and the Vikings as we've had several lead changes in this game. Right now, it's St. Augustine on top, 52-50. to 50. Right now, Ray Bathia, 22 points for Atlantic City. David Aikens with 17. Derry with six. And Wanya Colon, his first field goal of the game there. He now has five, first three-point field goal, I should say. And then Austin Kennedy leading the way for St. Augustine right now with 16. You mentioned earlier about the three-point line here. Ray Bathia just took one, and I swear he looked down at the lines and was behind the college line again when he took that last three-pointer. So maybe throw, maybe throw you off a little bit, a little, little different look. Atlantic City's used to playing in a gym like this with you know the larger gym and some other teams that would come in and play here wouldn't be as used to it. St. Augustine's got a little of that feel to it as well. Yeah, sometimes the sight line's a little bit different, obviously, the hanging baskets here at Stockton, but you're right, both of these teams play with a similar setup. I know St. Augustine has the stanchions, but still sort of a, a larger, airy, professional-style gym with the overhead scoreboard, so not all that much different. We've heard teams that come into St. Augustine, and I'm sure Atlantic City the same way. When they come in and they've never played there before, it's a different look, a different feel. You know, all the things the same though, right? The basket's the same height and all that, but that sight line is a little something different for you. Yeah, a lot of times, especially early in the season with the Boardwalk Basketball Classic down there at the Wildwoods Convention Center, a lot of low scoring down there. I guess one, because it's early in the year. Number two, because teams just aren't used to playing in, a, in an arena-style setting. But here at Stockton, the house is packed. 3.51 to go. Hermit's up two with the basketball. Here's Hargis. Gets it out to Walt Harvey. And now back to Hargis. Good matchup here between Hargis and Ray Bathia. A couple of juniors. Entry pass to Mutz in the high post. Now gets it out to Harvey. Jab step. Nice move to the right. Contact. No call. And another sellout hustle play from Marlon Hargis, but this time, I guess they'll say either he or the ball was out of bounds. Walt Harvey, just a nice, a nice move, just doesn't get it to go. We've seen a few of those from guys. That's got to credit the defense again. Almost everything tonight has been contested. Not too many easy buckets, but there's been a lot of tough makes from both teams. AC trying to tie things up. Derry thought about a three. Instead pulls it down. Kennedy on him for St. Augustine. Approaching three minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Gene Allen calling out the play as AC takes its time. Derry, top of the key, left-hand dribble. Derry, nice pass down low to Bathia, gets Mutz in the air. And let's see, will they get Mutz coming down? We were kind of blocked by the other official here. I'm not sure what he did. I yep, they're gonna get Mutz, and I guess it would have to be some contact down low as Bathia did get him up in the air, and I guess they're going to say Bathia sort of leaned into him a little bit to draw the foul. So one and one. Now it's a non-shooting foul. So yeah, one and one, and he misses the front end. So that's a big call there, whether Bathia was going up or not. They say he was on the floor, and he misses the front end of a one and one. So Hermit still with the lead and the basketball, under three to go. Now here is Mutz in the low post. Up top and now into the corner for Stoll. And they work it all the way around to Kennedy. Talk about your roles on the team. Guys know who's, who should be taking these shots and where on the floor. Bonadieu has done a great job on Mutz. It's a good look there from Mutz to Stoll, but he can't get it to go down low. Gets his own rebound. Still can't get it to go. Atlantic City with the basketball. Contested shots. Bathia to Derry, and it spills out somehow. And St. Augustine has some Here's Kennedy. 
hard to the bucket, and Austin Kennedy the now run. has 18. Yeah, the runouts from St. Augustine, they know where they each other are. Gets it down the floor to Kennedy, lays it in. Tough pass there, and it's a steal by St. Augustine. Hargis goes up strong and flushes it, posterizing David Aikens. Would have been a tough angle for Aikens anyway, and a dunk there. I haven't seen that much emotion from Marlon Hargis in his three years at St. Augustine, but he goes up emphatically and then has a little, uh, a little gusto to the crowd. St. Augustine all of a sudden in control, up by six. Here's a three ball on the way, and it goes down, and boy did AC need that. You were exactly right there. You talk about a shot that had to go. Atlantic City calls the timeout, but St. Augustine got on that run, that little roll, and the three cuts the lead back in half. Nazim Derry gets the roll from the outside. He now has nine points, 139 to go. Atlantic City down by three as the Hermits went on quite a run there, and then the Vikings able to get a much-needed three ball here. So 139 to go. If you're St. Augustine right now, it's a fine line, right? You talk. It might be a little too early to talk about this, but you talk about taking air out of the ball. It, it's sometimes it's that prevent defense in football, right? It prevents you from winning. You want to keep attacking right now if you're St. Augustine. You want to keep attacking for a couple reasons. Number one, the way Atlantic City's playing defense, I'm not so sure St. Augustine could do that. They have not been able to really run a great offensive set. Uh, so whether they could do that or not, Paul Rodeo likes to run a spread set where he gets a lot of motion. Do they go ahead and do that now? I would say no. I say they could keep attacking and then play defense at the other end, and Atlantic City gets the ball back. You also have to think of the foul shot situation. We said, you know, Bethea missed one here. Mutz has struggled earlier. If I'm Gene Allen on the other side and Mutz gets the ball in low, I think I'm going to that hack of, hack of Justin, I guess we'll call it, the hack of shack mode because, again, not for – not taking it out of the play, but if he's in position to score, make him earn it. How about Maul of Mutz? There you go. That works a little bit better. <laughs> Trademark. All right, here we go. St. Augustine, 56. Atlantic City, 53. And a quick foul there. And there you go. That's You called it, David. That's exactly what Atlantic City might have been doing there, although they have a few fouls yeah, to go until we get somebody on the line. But I think at this point, Gene Allen wants to get his team closer to that one-on-one -on -one situation. Yeah, you, you certainly want to get to the spot that if that's the strategy you want to employ, you're at the one-on-one -on -one mark. Tough spot to inbound. And they do get it into Kennedy. All the way under his own basket. Now taken away, or was it? It was a foul on the play. And still not a shooting situation here, so not a bad foul. And they're going to get Bethia. His third, though. Something to keep an eye on, although with just 133 to go, not as much of a factor. Extra ball handler in the game with Amici in for St. Augustine as well. Hargis tough, gets it into Amici. Spot. And back somehow to Hargis, and he's fouled again as Atlantic City just committing some fouls, and now they have six. So the next one, if they choose to continue to foul, would put St. Augustine on the line. Well, St. Augustine getting close to that five seconds, but what a tough spot to throw the ball into Amici where he's trapped right there on the sideline. And as you said, the next one would be one and one if they want to foul again. Here's Mutz in the post out to Amici, wide open, but in this spot he doesn't jack it. And now we have, do have a foul. And let's see. We'll send Nick Amici to the line good for a foul. one and one. Yeah, a good foul shooter, but tough, different situation. You've got to make him in this tough spot here. Amici scoreless tonight. Again, he had... 14 the other night against Mainland and really uh, was a key part of that third quarter surge that put that game away. So Amici, big spot here. Hermits up three. He can make it a two possession game. First free throw is no good. And AC gets the rebound. Here's Nasir Morgan, has some space. Cologne for three. Long, Morgan gets the rebound. And let's see. Foul on the rebound attempt, and it goes against St. Augustine. So a one and one situation, and a similar spot here, Dave. Flash Morgan not in the scoring column. He has seen more minutes than Amici, so he's been into the flow of the game, but he's going to have to pick up his first points right now in a huge spot. Yeah, the clean look there from Cologne. Again, doesn't go down, so it's sort of the story for him. But the other story is Atlantic City getting the offensive rebound. So here's Morgan. Another junior, standout football player as well, wide receiver for the Vikings as Justin Mutz implores the Hermits, Richland Rowdies to get fired up. And free throw no good. So front end missed of a one and one for both teams and now a quick foul. You gotta be careful though, Dave. You never know when they're gonna call that intentional foul. It really wrapped up on that play. Yeah, exactly, there's the, there's the, you know it's intentional, but do you call it in that spot? 
Again, not to put any pressure on him, but Walt Harvey, again, traditionally a good foul shooter. Last year in the South Jersey final, Walt Harvey hit two huge foul shots to send the game into overtime. Where St. Augustine beat St. Joe Matuchin, so he's been there before. Harvey one and one. First free throw is good, so no broadcast jinx on that one. Harvey will get another one. Two possession game now, which is huge. 1-12 to go, still a lot of time, but Hermit's up by. I think on a made shot here at St. Augustine, maybe a little token pressure. Second one is good as well. Harvey has eight, it's a five point game. Yeah, a little token zone pressure just to make it harder for Atlantic City. Derry over Mutz and Ball comes out of bounds right to our table, and it'll stay with Atlantic City. Mutz always looming in the back, and you always have to look for that offensive rebound if they want to miss shot, if he's going for the shot block. Pathia, the ball gets away, and he's able to save it to Derry somehow, but another steal here by Kennedy ahead to Stoll. Travis Stoll with the flush, and big time trouble right now for AC. St. Augustine pulling away up by seven, under a minute to go. Austin Kennedy always in that right spot, comes up with it, feeds the teammate for the flush, and that may be it. Here's Derry for three. That one does not go down, and now the Vikings have to foul right away here, and it's David Aikens committing the foul. Boy, this one was close all night long, and just in the last several possessions there, St. Augustine, excuse me, may have put this one to bed. Just a couple of possessions, a missed three, a foul shot at the other end, the steal, Travis Stoll with the dunk, and Elston Kennedy at the line. He's the guy I would want if I'm Paul Rodeo there to kind of finish this thing off with 36.3. Look of disbelief right now from Gene Allen saying, hey, we were right in this thing. I blinked and now we're down seven. Kennedy's first free throw is good. I, I would say that they're not the first team to see that against St. Augustine. They can get on that mini run and theirs just happened to come with this last minute. But what a, a really a tremendous effort by Atlantic City here tonight. Really one of the best games of the season in my eyes as Kennedy makes two in terms of competitiveness and atmosphere and everything considered as it might be too little too late here for Atlantic City as Derry will jack a three from the corner way short. Stoll comes down with the rebound and it looks like the Vikings will call off the pressure here. Well and as we said with the young Atlantic City team you'll see them certainly back. I wouldn't be surprised to see them back in this game again. Great valiant effort by Atlantic City much better than the first two times they played. Gene's got to be happy with that as he takes on Eastern on Monday. Paul Rodeo, another Cape Atlantic League championship, and then he moves on to the next site, which is the non-public A. A celebration at Stockton as St. Augustine makes it three in a row, Cape Atlantic League champs once again, and knocking off the Vikings of Atlantic City for the second year in a row, 62-53 the final tonight. And the Hermits' domination of the Cal continues here as they find a way to get it done. It was difficult, Atlantic City led during some crucial parts of this ball game, but St. Augustine hanging with it and coming away with the win here, led on the night by 20 points from Austin Kennedy, 14 points from Marlon Hargis. Justin Mutz had 10, of course, dominating the boards and also the blocks category as well. Wal Harvey with eight, Travis Stoll with six, Brendan Aldrich with four off of the bench for Atlantic City, Ray Bathia, a game high, 22 points. David Aikens, 17 points, seemed to cool off a little bit there down the stretch. Nazim Derry with nine, and Wanye Cologne with five. Well, you said it the right. St. Augustine found a way to win it. Certain things weren't working. One thing that always seems to be working for them is their defense that leads to transitions. You saw in that last, just in that last minute, the steal leads to the dunk and kind of put the game away right there. So the trophy presentation about to take place here is Cape Atlantic League President Steve Fortas, Athletic Director at Apsigami, going to present the Hermits with another Cape Atlantic League trophy. That trophy case filling up out there in Richland. And Paul Rodeo comes out to accept and his uh, senior captain's right behind him. Yep. As what a run it's been. What a run it's been. You said the last time they've lost to a Cape Atlantic team was Atlantic City in this tournament, in the Cape Atlantic tournament and, and back in 2014. So the run continues for the Hermits here in the Cape Atlantic. Just getting word that we have uh, some viewers all the way from Pittsburgh. None other than Pete Thompson, Mike Gill, hanging out, checking out the stadium series. I don't know what the weather's like out there, guys. Probably I think they're catch, trying to catch it a little sun. Trying to get some outdoor <laughs> hockey in, but it might be a little 
little melty back here at Stockton, though. 62-53, again, the Hermits win the Cape Atlantic League Championship. Some pictures, as you see on the court right now, as Mutz posing with Austin Kennedy. This senior class at St. Augustine now, this should be 103, I think, is the total wins that that senior class has had in their four years. An exceptional group, uh, a group that had a, a great run last year as juniors to the state championship. They want to make that run again. Can they do it? Well, we're certainly going to see in the next couple of weeks. Yep, bigger things to play for, but obviously, as we talked about, this was a main goal for this team. You know, one of many main goals, obviously, uh, you also want to take home the South Jersey Championship and go from there. But you got to start with the Cape Atlantic League, and that's what the Hermits did here tonight. And really, you know, balanced scoring. It's a team, too, Dave, that, I mean, what, the top scorer, Austin Kennedy, he, what, averages about 14 a game, something like yeah, that. Yeah. And, and, you know, part of that is because sometimes they're, they're just overpowering opponents and you're getting reserves into the game. But a different guy can step up every night. Austin Kennedy, 20 tonight, and Hargis, a big game, too, with 14. And a lot of teams say it, but I've been with this team a lot. They really, truly believe it. They really don't care who scores. Justin Mutz is a big-time player, and he doesn't care who gets all the points. Tell you what, I'm going to try to grab somebody for you. You up for an interview? Absolutely. St. Augustine coming off with the win. Justin Mutz. And we're going to get a chance to talk to Austin Kennedy. Austin, great job. Thank you. Little different than it was the last two times, the first two times when you played Atlantic City. What did they do different to you guys tonight than they did the first two times? Uh, you know, they just came out and played, you know. They, they gave it their all, and so did we. But, uh, you know, I give them a lot of credit. They held us to, I don't know how many points in the first half, 30, but we led up to many points. But uh, it was overall great atmosphere, an exciting game, and, uh, you know, good luck to the rest of them in the season because they did a great job. They seem to turn the pressure up on you, specifically handling the ball. You got a couple of shots to go, but one of the things you did in the first half was crashing the offensive boards. How did you find that, the opportunity to score off of that? Uh, you know, our coaches were just telling us that they're not blocking everybody out, so, you know, we go to the offensive glass and we get easy baskets. And, you know, that helped us out a lot tonight, too, just, just getting those easy baskets and uh, giving us momentum for the rest of the game. Was there a concerted effort we saw on a certain time coming out in the third quarter and in the fourth to get Justin the ball down low? Was that what Coach Rodeo was looking for you guys to do? Uh, definitely, and we had to get him the ball. You know, I mean, he's our best player on the team, and, uh, you know, he's got to score for us to win. He does so many other things, but in games like this, he needs to score, and we just try to get him the ball. We've talked to you all season long that there are big goals for this team, but I know that one of the goals for you is always the Cape Atlantic League. How's it feel to get another one here? It uh, definitely feels great, uh, you know, third time in a row. But, uh, you know, we're still looking forward to doing more damage in the state playoffs. You know, this is a great win, and we're excited to have a lot of fun today. But um, we've got to get uh, ready to practice on Monday and uh, get ready for states. Get ready for practice Thursday night, your first game. Good job. Thank you. Austin, congratulations. Now we're going to pull in Coach Rodeo. Austin, Co I'll be right there. Coach, we just talked to Austin a little bit. You know Gene well. You guys know, know a lot about each other. What did he do differently today, and is that what you expected well, him first, to do? He had his kids play with a lot of more, lot more aggression than they did the first time. We we counted on the bench with uh, seven 50-50 balls in the first half. They got every one of the seven. Uh, they outscrapped us to the ball. Third quarter, they stuck in there. They, they were content with playing the style he wanted to come in with. And then just our kids just a little bit more right down the end, uh, a couple big plays that we made. What was your message at halftime? I said to Austin, it looked like you made a concerted effort to get Justin the ball. Well, we wanted to get Justin the ball on the block. We got it to him two or three times in a row, got two or three buckets out of it. And, uh, you know, I, I, I thought we played pretty well down the stretch. We didn't play great before that, but we played well enough uh, down the stretch. We talk about that, you know, you have a lot of goals for this team. And this Cape Atlantic League Championship is important to you. What, what do you say about this team well, the, in your the, third the, straight? The, the difference today was we have whatever we have, and I don't even know the number, they know, 57, 58. They did not want to go out as seniors losing their last league game. So regardless of the championship, we now carry that into next year with this group, and uh, it meant a lot to me because it meant a lot to them. Turn the page now to the Cape Atlantic, or to the the NJSA playoffs, what do you think about this team? Are they, how are they running? How are they progressing? Is this team playing as well as you'd like them to be going into the playoffs? Well, obviously, we were a little sloppy today. Uh, I thought in, in, in spurts we do, in other spurts we don't. So we have to go back to the drawing board. We'll take tomorrow off and start Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to get ready for who we think we're going to play on Thursday. Congratulations Thank on another Cape Atlantic League that. championship. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 
All right, so that'll just about do it for us here today at Stockton University, where St. Augustine has knocked off Atlantic City to win its third straight Cape Atlantic League Championship, 62-53. Dave, your final thoughts? Final thoughts are exactly what they both said. I, Gene Allen came out and said, we're going to go out and throw it out there. We're going to play this team hard. We lost to them twice. We're not going to – we're going to go out and get play the way Atlantic City needs to play to go further. Whether he's happy about the – nobody's happy about the loss, but he has to be happy about the way his team competed after the first two times. And for St. Augustine, again, it's the type of team to get contributions from everyone – that's what they built themselves on, and that's what's going to carry them into the state tournament. All right, so Ocean City, champs on the girls' side. St. Augustine, champs once again on the boys' side. The Hermits knock off Atlantic City 62-53. The Hermits have a couple days off before the state playoffs. Atlantic City back at it on Monday against Eastern. That game will be in Atlantic City. For Dave Catalana, I'm Mike Frankel. Thanks for joining us today on 97.3 ESPN.com. And thanks to Matt Ulmer and Ulmer's Appliances for providing the video for today's game. One more time, St. Augustine, Cape Atlantic League champs, 62-53 over Atlantic City.